This is the Corner Cutter Podcast, a consistent weekly show all about speed cubing, and you are listening to episode 63. Welcome to the Corner Cutter Podcast, podcasting since 2014 and cubing since 2015. I'm your host, Josh, and this is the most consistent speed cubing podcast dedicated to entertain and educate you with in-depth conversations with cubers from all across the sport. My website is thecornercutterpodcast.com, and thanks so much for joining me today me today for episode 63 of the podcast. Today it's a big Q&A episode. I'm answering your questions that you submitted in a giveaway that I had last month. And then also we have cubing news, some personal cubing updates, shout outs, and some podcast updates. So it's a jam-packed show. And as always, if you have any feedback, questions, or suggestions for future episodes, the easiest way to contact me is through email. My email address is josh at thecornercutterpodcast.com. Let's jump right into the first ever Q&A episode of the Corner Cutter Podcast. First question is from Cubing Burger. He asked, if you could choose any guest to have on your podcast, who would it be? So I guess Felix would come to my mind first and most people's minds first, but my answer is Erno Rubik. I really would like to have him on the show and interview him. That would be really cool. Next question is from Samuel Bard. He said, who has been your favorite guest to have on the show? Hmm. That's such a hard one. I had to look over who I've had on. It. I mean, I've had so many great interviews and I've enjoyed talking with so many people. If I had to pick one, though, maybe... It would probably be Sean from Speed Cube Review. That was a really fun interview. And I he's a great guy and I enjoyed talking with him. So Sean from Speed Cube Review and that was episode 26. I'll have the link in the show notes. Next question is from Duncan Bannon. What is your favorite thing about having your own podcast? Nice question. Well, the first thing might be, I know you said favorite thing, but I have two things, uh, I think. So, first one would be I love working on projects, and having a podcast is sort of like a continuous small project. I got to set up interviews, record every week, and I really enjoy that part of podcasting. And then connecting with all these awesome people. And then the other part would be I get to talk to Cubers that I would never talk to if I didn't have a podcast. And a podcast is a lot of times that way. You get to talk to people no matter what sport or hobby or niche you're in. You get to talk to people that you normally would never get to talk to or never even think of talking to. So, cool question, Duncan. Next question is from the Cuba Cubes. Who is your favorite YouCuber? You don't have to say me. Okay, let's... That's a hard one. Um... I think I would say DG Cubes. I really like his videos and He's a cool guy. Next question is from Soccer Turtle Cuba. What is you, your favorite comp that you have been to? Hmm. Ooh, I really enjoyed the last one, but I think 
overall favorite would have been Blue Cubed 2018. I won Pyramix there and just had an awesome time. It was a really fun competition um, in all different aspects. And I think part of the reason could have been there, it was only about a 40 person comp. So it didn't feel as rushed, and we stayed pretty much on schedule, which was nice. A Rubik Cubing asked, What do you believe is humanly the best possible time considering the best possible scrambles? Let's say we got down to a 20 move solve, and then. I mean, that's it's, it's possible, considering the best scrambles. So, then we were at 12, I, maybe 13, possibly even 14 TBS. Even if it was 22 moves and 12 TPS, that's under 2 seconds. So... I would say we'll eventually see sub or very low twos 2.3. I don't know how much faster you can get after that, though. I mean, it's possible, but you're going almost toward one looking a solve there. CPAC asked, what do you think about the Red Bull Championships? At first, I was totally against them. Like I mentioned in the debate a few weeks ago. But then now, it's mainly because they were partnering with Rubik's, which was suing the cubicle at that time. So now I'm sort of neutral about them. I think it's good that they're trying to spread cubing. And the WCA is now working with them a little bit. So as long as the WCA stays as the official record keeping place, I'm I'm okay with them. And they do they expanding cubing a little bit. They had matched the scramble, which is an event that hasn't held been held officially before. So that was pretty cool. But as long as they don't copy and stay separate from the w- WCA, then I'm okay with them being around. Next question is from Adrian Rivera Leon. He said, what would your channel be about if you hadn't decided to do a podcast. Well, my original plan with this YouTube channel was making cubing videos, unboxings, reviews, how-to tutorials, but I started the podcast at the same time, and I really found that the podcast was having more success, and I enjoyed doing it more than making actual videos. So I started to move away from making videos and doing YouTube. But then I started uploading my podcast episodes to YouTube. So after a while, it turned into mostly that. So I was like, I should probably change the name to the Corner Cutter Podcast. And I recently did. I think it was a good decision, and I'm really glad I did now. So, so if I didn't do a podcast at all, I would have a cubing channel about unboxings, reviews, like I said. I'm not sure if I would have what sort of unique videos I would make. If you look at some of my first videos, you might be able to see what I was trying to get at. Like I had how to getting sub 20 
and like my cube collection video and stuff like that. Cosmo asked, what motivates you to do more cubing? Um, well, first off, I just enjoy it. I like practicing and competing against myself to try to break PBs and stuff like that. But also, other things like ranking, world rankings and I guess state rankings as well is fun too, or trying to win competitions. So I guess that motivates me to practice more. And then if I have a competition coming up, I'm motivated to practice the events that are being held in that competition because I want to do good and see my times drop. Oliver asked, what are your favorite events? Uh, Pyramix, of course. I love Pyramix. And then my second favorite event is 3x3. Other than that, though, it kind of varies on what I'm into at the time. And I enjoy 5x5, though, as well. Fourth grade was lit. Asked... What made you want to start a cubing podcast? Cool question. I wanted to start a cubing podcast because there weren't any active shows in Apple Podcasts. There was the Dilsoni podcast going on at the time, and the cubing show was like ending right around that time. They didn't let anybody know, but it was you definitely could tell it was pod fading and there was just like a gap in the cubing podcast niche that I thought I could fill and I thought I had something to say in it. So what I eventually started out with the podcast was well oh I guess I'm still doing that now. I want to, instead of just Cubo's chatting and talking about random stuff, not that that's bad or anything, I wanted to have a podcast focused on learning about cubing and gaining knowledge about the sport. So I thought I could do that. If you look at my first few episodes, I I mean, it's kind of funny looking back at it now but I had like when to learn full OLL how to organize a WCA competition like a show about making magnetic cubes and that's all really good and that's what I focused on back then then it turned into bringing more guests on the show and having them share their knowledge and and opinions about the sport and it's kind of evolved over time but that's what made me want to start a cubing podcast because i thought there was a space in the cubing podcast niche i still have quite a few questions left but i'll just answer a few more right now and then i'll spread the rest over the next few shows Simon asked, what is the best way to learn intuitive F2L or improve the F2L look ahead? Improve intuitive F2L, you really need to just experiment inserting pairs and pairing up pieces. It can be difficult sometimes, and if you really can't find a good solution, check the F2L cheat sheet. I'll have a link to one in the show notes this episode on the episodes page at thecornercutterpodcast.com. And yeah, it's just really, just sit down with the cube and make the cross and then experiment pairing up the F2L pairs. It is hard sometimes, but just power through it 
and you'll be surprised what you find. And then if you're solving, speed solving, and you get to a case that you don't know, then stop and don't worry about your time and just experiment with that case because some cases you don't get as often as some other ones. Um, that's my advice, and I hope it helps. Rustin had a few questions. He first one was, what is your favorite thing about running a podcast? It's pretty similar to one I had earlier, but I would say favorite thing about running a podcast is I get to talk to so many interesting people. And I really like listening to podcasts so it's kind of natural that I love hosting my own and filling a need in the community is great as well his other question was why is Pyramix your favorite event and what do you like about it um First off, I started the Pyramix race on the speed solving forums when I got a Moe Magnetic Pyramix for Christmas. And that was actually about exactly two years ago. So, wow. So, and then, so I guess that made me practice Pyramix a lot and see my times improve consistently every week. And I had support from other people doing the race. So I just grew to like it over time. And then when I went to my second competition, I was in contention for winning. I was like, and then after I was like, I'm actually pretty decent at this event. So I just kept practicing it and have gotten decently fast. Um, what do you like about it? I like that it's a shorter event and you can do an average of 100 pretty easily. So, especially now, average of 3.5 seconds, you can do that pretty quickly. Um, it's also, triangles are cool. I don't know, having only three tones or being able to do three tones having four sides it's just cool puzzle to hold and tips don't bother me too much like it does other people although it can be annoying sometimes and so I think we're going to wrap up the Q&A there thanks everybody so much for all the questions I got these questions from you guys entering the Corner Cutter Podcast YouTube giveaway. And um, lots of interesting questions there. Let's move on to cubing news, records, releases, and ratings. biggest news in the past couple weeks has been, of course, most of you probably know by now, the 3.7 3 by 3 world record, which we covered last week. But then I guess the second biggest one would be the 3 by 3 blind single by Max Hillard. That was 16.55. That Dropped it by about a second, a little under a second. And that's a pretty big drop. So congrats to Max. Stanley Chapel also has been super busy breaking five blind records. It is now down to three minutes and one second. So that was a huge drop from the previous world record, which was three minutes and 40 seconds. That was amazing. And then notable average is Philip Wheeler got a 6.06 3x3 average. That was interesting. And 
Felix also got another sub six. Three by three average the other week. He got a eight second solve on the last one though. He needed a five, like a 5.85 or something right around there to get the world record average, but he messed up. So that's too bad, but I'm sure we'll be seeing. He's been getting lots of low sixes as well, so we might be seeing something coming up soon. Uh, moving on to releases. Moyu, some of these are kind of old, but Moyu released the Aoyan Skube. Interesting thing about this puzzle is it comes with extra caps, like center caps. So you could replace them with the other ones because these are concave. It just has a little dip in it. So it has a place for your thumb and finger. So a little extra grip. Going sort of toward the X-Man skew, but it's not like totally concave yet. Pretty interesting though. Sheng Xiao, Mr. M. Pumix. Wow, Sheng Xiao is getting pretty crazy with these Pumix releases. They released the Tank Pumix and one other one. I it was the gem, yes. So wow, they're getting lots of different designs. It'd be fun to compare all of those. Sheng Xiao also released the Mr. M two by two. Um the YJ M G C Megaminx was released. It is sculpted, so pretty good grip there. The Valk 2M was recently released, and this is pretty interesting. It comes in black and stickerless, so a few people have received this puzzle. I you know the cubicle and Speed Cube Shop both did giveaways for a spare one that they both had, so it's pretty interesting. We're still now at the point with 2x2s where we are at with 3x3s. Wuxia has lockup issues. Weipo is slow. Gan, 249v2m, isn't the best either. So we'll see how this puzzle preforms. I don't have a rating this week, so let's move on to shoutouts. Simon reached out by email and he said, Hello, Corner Cutter. As you are an experienced speed cuber and one that I know from your podcast, I would like to ask you one question. I have been looking at some cubing news and have found some videos about the 3.7 solve by Yu Sheng Du. I would just like to have your opinion on whether you believe this to be true and because in that case it would be a massive jump from 4.22 to 3.47 seconds the only reason that i am asking this and not researching is because i find it fishy that it is not on the wca if it is true when do you believe that will be added i would also hope to see a possible discussion about this in an upcoming episode because this is major cubing news. Anyway, thank you for reading this email up to this point and happy speed cubing. Sincerely, podcast listener. So this was very early, like this was the next day or the same day that the 3x3 world record was broken where we still didn't know if it was a fake or if there was a miss scramble or something like that. So I replied him to him with information. And one of the reasons that it wasn't on the WCA right away is because, like all competitions, it takes a 
day or a couple days for the delegate to review all the solves and make sure everything is right. And especially with this competition, I mean, the WCA had to investigate it a little bit and talk with the delegate. So that's why it took a little longer for this solve to be posted on the records page. In one of his next emails, he said, I asked him how long he had been listening. And he said, I've been listening for about three weeks now, and I usually listen to about two episodes every night while I cube. I found the podcast by going online to Apple Podcasts because I wanted to listen to a decent cubing podcast. After looking around, I skipped yours at first because I thought it was all about corner cutting. Eventually, I tried it and found it to be fantastic. Thanks, Simon, for checking it out and listening to so many episodes. I appreciate that. Gotten some other feedback as well. Rodrigo emailed in from Brazil. He said, Hi, Josh. Congratulations for that great interview with j It was a very good one. Thanks, Rodrigo, for emailing in. So you guys just sending in small, short emails like that is a huge encouragement. Thanks. And then I got two great reviews from Apple Podcasts. First one was from Commander Gandalf from the USA. He said, great podcast with everything you need to know about the cubing world. Great job, Josh. Plus, maybe you could put a tips and tricks video. I'm assuming you mean podcast. That's a great idea, and I might have something planned for that. Like, just general cubing tips or something like that. I know I have something regarding competitions coming up about that, and I'll share more in the next few episodes. And then the other review was from W.I. Appraiser. He said, This podcast is presented in a delightful and engaging way by a passionate and knowledgeable host. Josh's passion for the Rubik's Cube is contagious, and I look forward to every new episode. Thank you guys for those kind reviews. They really encourage me and help the podcast out. Why don't we move into some personal and podcast updates? As you guys know, I had a test last week, so that's why there was no episode. I'm happy to say I passed and now can focus on other things like the podcast. The other thing is I recently started organizing a competition that will be happening in April. So I recently found the venue and am working on confirming the delegate and all that sort of stuff. So just beginning to start the the process and I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on with that. Podcast updates, magnets for making a magnetic clock, either a Rubik's clock or a Lingao clock. I have those magnets still. It's $15 for a full set. If you're interested, just go to thecornercutterpodcast.com slash magnet or slash clock magnets. Again, the cornercutterpodcast.com slash clock magnets. And you just fill out the form and you can buy a set there. It's usually shipped out like the same day as well. So super fast shipping. Also, I have affiliate links with Amazon and most of the major cube stores. You can Go to thecornercutterpodcast.com slash support and 
click on the links and use the codes when you shop at those places. So by doing either those of those things, purchasing magnets or using my links and codes, you're supporting the show because I got to pay every year for hosting of the website and hosting of the RSS feed. So producing this podcast isn't free and I really appreciate your support. Then, if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel recently, I have updated the podcast, the podcast episodes I post on YouTube, the thumbnails of those. So it's pretty cool now, easy to find which episode you want to listen to, and this was mainly at the rec- recommendation of j so thanks, j for the advice. And also, if you're interested in coming on the podcast, you can go to the com slash guest and fill out the form. I do have some new requirements. Like, you've got to have, like, perfect or new perfect audio in order to be on the show or you have to have a way where you can record and then send me the mp3 if you don't have the best internet connection and that's because i've heard from a couple of you guys that the audio on some of the previous cuba chats episodes haven't been the best so i'm trying hard now to get it as good as i can and Yeah, I totally agree. Having good audio is very important for a podcast. So I'll be sending out an email soon to all the people who have signed up as to be on the Kubu chats, episodes, etc. And let you guys know on the details. That's pretty much all the content I have for episode 63 of the Corner Cutter podcast. Next week is Christmas, so um won't be uh, posting an episode early in the week, but I might post an episode later in the week, maybe Thursday or Friday, with an interview. We'll see, though. Hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas, and it's great receiving gifts and giving gifts to other people but try to remember the real meaning of christmas and why we are celebrating thank you so much for listening and remember you can find links and show notes to everything i mentioned in this episode on the website the cornercutterpodcast.com and if you have any feedback, suggestions, or comments, or just want to reach out, my email address is josh at com. And now it's time to take this episode back to the scrambling table, and I'll talk to you guys again next week in episode 64 of the Corner Cutter Podcast.